Greetings and welcome to In-Depth, I'm DK Rostar. Writing in the Sand, a writer's retreat, it takes place from August 9 to 11. Now to set the context and state the significance, we have writer in residence Lisa Allen Agostini and public relations officer Kevin Fortune. Welcome to you both, and Lisa, I want to start off with you, please. It's almost a, it's a double barrel question, whether or not writing is still a solitary pursuit and why the need for a retreat like this. Hmm. That's an excellent, excellent question. Writing is still a solitary pursuit. Um, you can definitely write anywhere in the world, um, and you usually do it by yourself, um, barring a few exercises where you might get together with pairs and write together in a group. Generally, it's solitary. You know, you, you generally write by yourself, even though now we have like this great community of writers online and we have this great connection. Um, it's still at the end of the day, you sitting down by yourself writing. So yes, it's very solitary. It tends to be. And the importance of a retreat is even though it's um, a solitary pursuit, writing in community is often done um, is often, it improves your writing and it improves you as a writer um, because you have access to criticism from your peers. You also have access to support, ideas, and just, you know, somebody cheerleading you and telling you, you're doing okay, keep going, which can be hard, you know, as a writer. So, yes, yeah, so a retreat would be a space where you can go find community with peers and also take a break from your day to day life because. Many of us write while, um, you know, working, raising children, um, doing whatever else with our lives. Writing is not our central occupation, even those of us who call ourselves writers. Um, and so it's good to take a break from your day-to-day -day life in order to dedicate yourself to bettering your craft and paying attention to, to your creativity. And there are a few things that you said that I, wanna, I want to get into in just a little bit, but let's bring Kevin into the conversation. And what type of writer... Is there a certain uh, target that you have in mind for this cohort, Mr. Fortune? Actually, no. Um, as Lisa says, I'll quote Lisa, writers write. So if you write, you're the kind of person that we're looking for. So you don't have to be of any specific experience or any specific, uh, you know, forte into the field. We would like anyone who has that desire to write, wants to improve themselves and also wants to take it seriously and I mean and we believe that taking time away to devote to writing is something that all writers want to do and so if you think that that's you then we're looking for you and it's interesting that you say with Alan Agostini that many people even though they may call themselves writers writing is not what they do uh, solamente, just just that. But many people looking on the outside, from the outside, may have their own opinions or views about writers. And following up on that statement you made, what is the biggest myth that you have you've come across and, 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 and myth bust for us with, with regard to writing, please? Um, okay, you're gonna, if you're a writer, I'll tackle the biggest myth first, just because I have a really short attention span and you're gonna have to remind me what the first question was, because I can only really think about one thing at a time sometimes. Um, the, the biggest myth is that you're gonna sell a book and become like a millionaire. That can happen, but, um, more likely you're gonna sell a book, it's gonna publish, it's gonna be published and you're gonna have about, I don't know, maybe... 3,000 copies in print, and then it will slowly die. That's what happens to most books that are published. Um, and so, you know, there's this myth that once you've been published, it's kind of like a, it's almost like it's a forever thing, and it's, it doesn't quite work like that. Um, and the first part of your question, Diki. No, man, that, 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 that was the brain. question, because there was, a little, there, was, <laughs> there was a little statement, and then it went into the question. But I also want to know uh, from you, Kevin, in terms of the retreat, what are some of the aspects of the retreat factors going into it? People looking forward to it say, okay, well, there's this to do, there's that to do, there's that to do. What Carry me through some of the increments of it, please. Perfect. That's an excellent question. Thanks for that. Um, first of all, we believe that environment is very important. And so that is what we try to create. 
So we want a place that is beautiful, set in nature, and kind of uh, inspires creativity on its own. And so for this cycle, we'll be um, at the top of Tobago um, Villas and Cabanas in Arnesville, Tobago. And it's literally on top of the hill and it's there's a panoramic view uh, of Tobago. So it's beautiful. Um, besides that, we have mindfulness exercises because we also believe that uh, creativity needs to be nurtured. And you need to be in that right frame of mind in order to, you know, be your best creative self. And so we have an on-hand yogi who's going to come and do yoga. She's also going to do a session called Creativity and Mindfulness. And so we're looking forward to that. And also, as Lisa said, you know, in your everyday life, you're raising kids, you're doing chores, you're running errands, you're doing all of those things. And so part of that is, you know, finding food. And for the retreat, obviously, we are, we took care of that. And so we have a Hilton trained chef. He actually works at Hilton right now, and he is going to take some time off. He's going to be living with us, preparing meals and catering to everybody's specific needs. And so that is one thing that you don't have to worry. We're also going to take some time to go and visit Kastara, because uh, Kastara usually has uh, a nice bonfire experience. And so we're going to take the team down there for some bonding at one point. And so it's not only going to be sitting, writing. Yes, you're going to have one-on-one -on -one sessions with the writers. You're going to have group activities. You're going to have scheduled time to write, all of those things. But we believe that in the short space of time, we would like to create an experience that fosters and, you know, grows that creative element within you. So then you can go afterwards and kind of, pull and glean from those experiences. And so we wanted to make it holistic. We wanted to make it something that would be enjoyable. So you don't have to worry about meals because they're going to be beautifully prepared. You have your mindfulness, mindfulness exercises. You have a beach that is literally a trek away from where we're staying. And so it is beautifully set up for creativity, for peace, for that kind of retreat element. And so we're really, really excited to offer this to the participants. Now you start to talk, that talk, and I, I want to clap and get something? excited. Talk to me, please. Talk to me. <laughs> I get excited too, and I wanted to say that as a writer, now I I always say writers write. Like what what makes you a writer? Well, you like to write, and you write. That's what makes you a writer. Don't you know? Let yourself be caught up in whether you were published, whether you're good. Mm -mm. Writers write, and if you write, you're a writer. You know, and then you can focus on the craft. But if you're a writer and you keep dipping from an empty bucket, mm -hmm. you cannot ever, like, produce work that is quality. You need to fill your bucket. You need to fill your soul with things that are, like, like rich experiences. And certainly, I mean, going to Tobago is a different air. I, I, sorry, even Tobagoans just say this. Air in Tobago is different, and it really... Mm -hmm. This kind of um, being in this beautiful environment and having these enriching experiences, I mean, you might not ever write about it or you might never feel like you have a direct connection between what happened this, you know, during this particular retreat and your development afterwards. But it is filling your bucket, which is something you need as a writer. That's what I wanted to say. Yes, man, and let me add on to that because, you see, I do like to talk about it, but I like to talk about it. In terms of, like, I passed and looked at Top of Tobago once and the thing did nice. So from the from the mm -hmm. maze to the bamboo patch to the to the ba to the to the shower that's outside to the mosaic kind of business. And then Castara has my heart. I like to go to places that they're not touristy. And even like on a Saturday with the dude oven and but being in that space and refilling your bucket, looking and at, at renewing your source which would allow for a level of vulnerability. How important is a space and a setting like that when you are going to be having criticism? And this is criticism from your work. You say, peers, but peers or not, why are you talking about how I write in like this? Oh, how, how, give, give, me, give me the breakdown on that, please, ma'am. Um, well, 
I myself and two other writers, one who is an American writer who um, writes uh, nonfiction, creative nonfiction, and the other co facilitator is a Trinidadian writer, Andre Bagu, who writes poetry, nonfiction, and fiction. Um, much like myself, I'm a kind of multi, multi, I don't know how you want to put that, but I've, I've covered different genres during my career. Um, and what we bring is an eye of experience. We bring an eye of objectivity. We bring an eye of, um, you know, just, just helpfulness and, and, and standing outside and telling you, okay, you see a house is a nice house. This wall crooked, straighten it. Because you know what? You're going to need a straight wall for the next floor. Stuff like that. So it's not like you ugly and your story is bad. No, it's nothing like that at all. What we do during writing workshops is like, it's supporting one another to take a good, hard look at our work and see how we can make it better. And peers, yes, it's important for your peers to do it because you might look at me and say, oh, she's a so-and-so writer from wherever, wherever. Uh -uh. Your peers are the people who are going to give you most of the feedback that you're going to get within these workshops guided by the facilitators, right? Because we, we will basically lay down a set of criteria. Okay, we will be looking, if it's a poem, for example, we will be looking at how the writer uses imagery. We'll look at the writer's use of um, how they use the line, how they use language, all those kinds of criteria. We're not going to be saying, oh, this is a terrible poem and leave it at that. Or this is a great poem and leave it at that. We break down the, the characteristics of what makes it good, what makes it not as good and help you as a writer to develop the work. And yeah, feelings is get hurt. But you know what? At the end of the day, I always say, in the workshop, it is not you that's being workshopped. It's your work. And you have to, as a writer, begin to separate yourself from your work. I know it sounds impossible, but you have to do it. You have to do it. And, and workshopping, most writers find workshopping extremely beneficial. And that's one of the reasons I guess there'll be a level of mindfulness coaching. But we continue the conversation when we return. We are speaking with Lisa Allen Agostini, writer in residence, as well as PRO of the Writing in the Sand, a writer's retreat, Kevin Fortune. Stay with us. We return with more. Welcome back. We are speaking about the Writing in the Sand or Retreat, a writer's retreat. We're doing so with PRO Kevin Fortune, as well as writer in residence, Lisa Allen Agostini. And Kevin, yes, I know you said that you're looking for everybody who writes, but some are there, do you approach individuals on an on a personal basis or is it a group something? And I didn't even ask how large is the cohort? Ah. Okay, well, we start, again, as Lisa said, um, <laughs> sometimes uh, our um, attention span weans. So I'll start with the last thing, right? And the, the cohort we're looking for between 9 to 12, which is really small, really manageable. We want to have an intimate setting where um, you can go have coffee with a, with a writer who has, you know, had that experience that you wish you had. And that is the kind of thing that you want to take away. So that it's not um, a classroom of 95 and the teacher doesn't even, you know, remember your name and that kind of thing. You know, we want it to be a nice intimate setting. So we're looking at between nine and 12 participants. Um, groups, we're looking, we're not looking for groups per se. As you said, individually, I remember, you know, a couple of people that have already registered, um, you know, they will call or they would send an email and I would ask them, you know, what is your writer's story? Like, what? Why do you want to do this? And you know, they would they would say things, you know, things that would be common. That you know, I've always had this dream, or I think that you know, this this particular poem or this particular story needs to go out there. I believe that you know, it, it has been within me for a while. I need to birth it. And I believe that you know, to answer your question, the kind of people we're looking for, I always say that this is a very niche product. You know, a writing retreat is not something that everyone is going to want to attend, but I believe that the tribe that we're looking for, the persons that this will resonate with, they're out there. And if it resonates with you and you feel the need to come to sit, to write, to, you know, 
um, be and sit among people that look like you, that have come from the same place like you. And so you makes you feel that what they have attained is even more attainable. Then I believe that this is definitely for you. And you're saying that and a feeling it resonating with me, actually, both of you, because I tell people that writing for academia has kind of spoiled the way that I write artistically. So I don't know if I need a reset or something. But um, and with that in mind, though, I want to ask you, please, Ms. Alan Agostini, do you think the role of the writer has changed in along with the way that people would may consume writing or even consume text a little differently? Absolutely. Um, well, not change so much has been amplified because there is a way within our society that we are still looking for voices of philosophy. We're still looking for voices of the, um, shall we say, the sort of voice of the people. We're also looking for, you know, we're looking for, for voices within society to articulate our concerns and without writers, what you end up with is reality TV. I mean, people write reality TV. Don't get me wrong. Somebody sits there and decides who is going to have an affair with who and, you know, all those kinds of convoluted nonsense that they have on reality TV shows. But um, in terms of, like, making sense of our society in a, a logical and, and, and or even, like, an absurdist way, who are the people who are writing or... And, and there's a strike in Hollywood right now with actors, um, with writers... And it's paralyzed the industry because writers are important. People produce our, you know, um, our, our news um, and, and digest our news and feed us back opinions. Those are writers. So, yes, definitely. Even in today's world where, you, you know, you fire off a tweet. Ugh, horrible. <laughs> fire off a tweet or you post to whatever other social media is your own personal um, favorite, but writers are still important in terms of looking at our culture, world culture, global culture, the ways in which we understand the world and, um, and help us to make sense of that. Helping us to make sense of that. But in terms of getting more information, because, Kevin, you spoke about individuals sending an email, calling. Give us that contact information, please. How do we, how do we get in contact? Sure. How do we find out well, more? You we know can, the date is this August 1911. Uh, website at www uh You can look for us on Instagram and Facebook at Writing in the Sand. Or you can call 6800346. Any one of those, and you will be in contact with us. All right, and just 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 give us closing statements. Thank you. I'll, we'll share thirty seconds each. Uh, anything that we may not have touched on that you want to put out there, let us uh, keep in mind. And we start with you, please, Kevin. Sure. Uh, I'd just like to say again that this we're looking for um, a very specific person not in terms of ability, but in terms of heart and who wants to do this and who believes that this is for them. This is self-care. This is calling for them. This is going to help them to get the space where they feel more at peace with themselves and creative self and doing that um, and bringing it to life. And so if that's you, you know, please contact us because this is literally a once in a lifetime opportunity. We have these amazing writers who are so down to it, and you won't regret it. Thank you very much, Ms. Alan Agostini. Thank you so much, DK, for having us on. Um, and uh, I want to say that as women, because I'm going to specifically ask women to come, as women, we always put the children first. We buy the dog food before we buy our own lunch. We do, <laughs> tell me what I lie in here, DK. We see about everybody else before we see about ourselves. And there's so many women who are writing and are looking at the price of this retreat and going, I can't afford that. And I want to tell you that an investment in yourself and in your writing is going to be beneficial, not just to you, but to your family, even your dogs. I wait, but I didn't find the opportunity to tell you, yeah, making no sense there, you know. But thank you very much, Lisa <laughs> Allen Agostini. Thank you, Kevin Fortune. Looking at this writing in the Santa Writers Retreat, and this has been In Depth with me, DK Ronstar. On behalf of the entire TTT News team, thank you so much for joining us.